back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Valve is moving on up, not to the east side, but to a nine-level apartment with a top story owned by um, Steve Ballmer. Didn't make that up. And Besiege has finally exited early. No, I'm just kidding with you. But they did update it again. Gavin is immersed in VR. Really immersed, if you uh, catch my meaning. And it's not lupus. It's never lupus. Frozen By celebrates 15 years of game development. It has certainly been a colorful history. And there may still be hope left for AMD, if you were to believe the recent Zen benchmark leaks. I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Axel, switching the bits, doing the nightmare feel under the Linux, joined by two other people also experience the Linuxy goodness. Starting out with from Canadian land, uh, Master Sveng. Oh no, my switch died. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from Space. You, you should be watching us live. <laughs> Pedro, yeah. what's AOS? <laughs> Joining us with Shot Realm Dynamic Live and the IRC, giving us the business back so we know what we're doing wrong and wronger. Helping us form that special bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Gentlemen, I'll start this out. I wasn't even going to mention it, but Jordan got a good laugh out of it. Because uh, I bought like a vaporizer thingy. And it's a Kanger, what the fuck ever, 160. If you're new to vaping, don't buy one. But I'm waiting on a firmware upgrade. <laughs> Yes. To 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 make it just right and just that special bit of sauce. That's a, that's all I got going on. So, and, and, and you you even include the best part: the firmware updater runs on Linux. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are you switching around today? Uh, aside from copious amounts of networking hardware that I'm probably going to have to go out and replace tomorrow, so that's going to be fun. I smacked into the wall. I finally got around to watching season six of the Venture Brothers. I'd waited about three years for that to release, and then another half a year before I got around to watching it. And now I got to wait another three years for season seven. God fucking damn it! Just to uh, mention, I guess it's obligatory at this point. You have to mention No Man's Sky during this uh, release window. I kind of lost two hours of my life playing uh, the... What's, what, what, what's, what's that, Pedro? Does it run in Linux? Uh, it, it runs on Wine, technically. Uh, but yeah, I kind of lost two hours of my life to it earlier today without even realizing it. That's bad. Well, unlike Pedro, who <laughs> will spend two hours apparently doing fucking all, <laughs> that's, that's what that game's about, our horse doesn't seem to have that issue, J-Baby. No, action, adventure, romance, you'll find none of these things in the Steamworks update of the week. Okay. All right, so Gabe N, he's spending a lot of time in the digital world. Maybe he's going to evolve his Agumon into a Greymon for the four of you who get that reference. Uh, no, he gave a little talk at the big Dota 2 tournament in Seattle this weekend, and uh, he's saying that he's spending a lot of time in the virtual world, in virtual reality, immersed in the technology. Uh, he's also um, opened up his email as usual to people who want to tr critique or send him, you know, hate mail so he can go cry in your piles of money. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's a lot. He's, he's really immersed with lots and lots of 360 degree video. But I, I mean, again, v v Valve seems to be Valve seems to be doubling down on the VR thing, and I mean, they kind of have to because. You're not going to get VR-ready hardware in your PlayStation or your Xbox or your Nintendo, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, so, yeah, PC is the only real platform that can push legit VR at acceptable frame rates. Um, so they they really want to corner that market before Microsoft. I don't know, uh, man. I think you're a bit being a bit crazy because, you know, now now the um, new PS4 and the X-Bone um, OnePlus 2 or whatever coming out, and they're going to have exclusives, and they're going to be like 90 billion more times powerful than your stupid PC, brah. Right, no, and, and, when I, and when I want to strap a laptop to my face, I will just take <laughs> this fucker right here that we were using for fucking diagnosis and put it on my goddamn face. So that's all I can see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can vote on show titles, better or worse. Uh, let's see those two show <laughs> titles in there. Um, you know, Pedro, the one thing I can't decide on, you know, Gaben's talking about this is like, what do I care about less, VR or um? You know, when I say VR, I should say looking like you're getting face fucked by a toaster because that's what you do look like. 
uh, or Dota, because both of those are in the negatives. Well, if you're going to factor in Linux support, at least Dota works on our Linux. With Vulkan. Yeah. So, yeah, with Vulkan, yeah. And uh, one thing that about this article in specific, uh, the VR experience photo that they have, uh, like uh, a third of the way down the article, uh, the Steam VR icon looks a lot like the Steam OS icon. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I will say to what you said, Jay, man, I'm, mm-hmm. Steam really, really doesn't promote stuff long term unless they make the hardware, and they didn't make the hardware on this one. No, but I, I think honestly, HTC has um, reason enough to keep this thing rolling because they've dumped a lot of R and D into it, and that costs money. And you know what and else costs phones money? Aren't doing so well. But you know, you know what else costs money? Rent. Rent can be expensive because Valve is doubling their office space to make room for more hats, presumably. Oh, look at you being so snarky, PC games, and all this available in our show notes. After the fact, they are moving from 125,000 square foot, whatever size that is, to 225,000 square foot. Um, Let's see. Floors 11 through 19 will be all theirs. And we know... For a fact that the only reason they would ever do something like this is to expand their uh, customer service department, right? Right, guys? Maybe they're actually going to create a millinery so that they can make actual hats to sell to people. I think this <laughs> no, is no, the direction no, no. that it's Valve should go into. It's for thing. their new uh, game development uh, section. So it's just going to be empty rooms collecting dust. Mm-hmm. Shut up. But, so, so, <laughs> but uh, the ownership of this building they're moving into is kind of interesting as well. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of the fun thing. It was like, well, why didn't you get the top floors? And like, well, you can't have the top floors, uh, Gabe. And it was like, why not? I'll make Half-Life 3. And Balmer was like, don't care, bro. I got a basketball team to manage. Now, now, I, I, I got a question for you. Is the penthouse of this building called the Balmer Peak? Showtime. Oh, it should. <laughs> it totally should. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's get off the topic of Valve and talk about... um. Valve? Yeah. yeah, or at least people asking Valve to please, oh, please make the gold SRC uh, engine open source or at least let the community access it so we can fix all the issues, all the long-standing issues that that particular engine has. And that's what Sam Vanier, Van here, Van here. That's, that's how you spell it. Van here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And my uh, and ass. Asked, <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he, uh, he, and a few other people on GitHub, on Valve's GitHub, are actually asking Valve to please let the community access the Gold SRC and the earlier versions of Source, so they can fix the issues that those engines still have. And if you've played the original Half-Life or the original Counter-Strike or the, even the original Team Fortress at this point, you what know... What about Ricochet, Pedro? What about Ricochet? The best game <laughs> ever created. <laughs> Admittedly, that one did come out for Linux. I don't know why, but it did. <laughs> but yeah, it's, they it's the want access... the best game access... ever, Pedro. Yeah, they want access to the engine so that they can fix it. Because there are some long-standing issues and some long, uh, well, there are some limitations to the engine. Because well, I mean, there's a couple issues. Old. The first thing that I thought about when I saw this, and I was like, how in the effing hell is, like, this is not open sourced in 2016? I was like, wait a minute, hang on. Went to the Steam store, I was like, oh, right, they're, they're still charging 99 a pop for it because <laughs> Valve cares, right? Um, but, yeah, I mean, they do want the access history so they can, you know, improve the gold sourciness, which I think is a good thing and yeah um half-life could use a shite metric ton of work jordan but you said there's some third-party licenses in there 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 i mean there might be who knows uh lot, lots of game development especially from the 90s borrowed and bought code from all sorts of places so who knows what kind of stuff can legally be released that was one of the big issues when they released the jedi knight code uh ethan's like oh yeah no i have a ton of code that i should not own legally <laughs> but it's there um and I mean, other otherwise, I I think it's a perfectly good idea because number number one, it'll allow the original Half Life games to be ported to new architectures like ARM. Aside from that crappy whatever the fuck it was, decompile, recompile the like 
a and, similar you know, code. maybe get some Vulcan and, support. Yeah, and again, it would be a fantastic move for the indie dev scene because it gives them another tool to work with. And hell, I mean, Crow Team released their original serious sauce. I don't know, man. So I, I think you're kind of crazy because this completely, I mean, this whole idea of open sourcing the engine and stuff like that did not work for id Software. Absolutely not. Well, I mean, they got bought up by Zenimax, so you can you can make that argument. <laughs> you can, yeah. <laughs> At that point, you're probably not. Let's just move on. Feral have released a bit of a, an update to Life is Strange, and apparently Life is Fixed, because if you were one of those people that decided to adopt, say, a Pascal GPU, like, uh, you know, the 1080 that uh, Mr. Mark Wimpress gave me, thank you very much. Very much oh, appreciated. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I had to be done. Continue. But yeah, uh, if you have a Pascal GPU, you may have noticed that Life is Strange was running like crap on Linux. Uh, it, you were either only running Life is Strange and you were getting uh, 70, 80 with a couple of dips down below 50. Uh, but they fixed that. There was... a. Uh, some issues with NVIDIA's new architecture and the Unreal Engine 3, as is to be expected because the Unreal Engine 3 is a few years old now, so you got to take that into account. But on my end, I am finally able to get anywhere in between 80 and 130 perps on the 1080. Uh, but you're, you're, when you're, I, you're forgetting the most important thing in this patch is that if you have a Dvorak keyboard, you can use it properly in the game. Oh, yeah, you actually get the uh, proper prompts on 4 keyboards now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I when when I first noticed the issue, I sent an email to not Brad, a.k.a. Nick from Feral, and he said that they had reached out to NVIDIA and they were working together. I, saw, I actually thought it would involve, like, a driver fix or something major or some such, but no. Uh, I guess the fine folks at Feral just needed a crash course on the Pascal architecture. Good on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the other the other interesting thing is they gave the Fedora guys a bit of love because now you can grab uh, stats for your choices if you don't have curl installed, which is kind of weird that you wouldn't. But I guess in certain minimal install scenarios, ah, who needs a textless HTTP <laughs> client? I know I don't, but you know what I do need then. Um, an update, update 15, uh, version not point three two of Besiege. It's like Minecraft for horrible people. You can make weapons of destruction and just all types of fun stuff. Basically, a couple of improvements to the figs, uh, figs. It's, I can't even reproduce that cock up. Um, <laughs> on the engines there. So, you know, um, that horrible device that we might have played a gif of way back from billions of years ago might need an update uh outside of that um it's still in early access this is a game you get you build siege machines and you destroy castles and then it gets infinitely more complex and they start out with the dirigibles and it just gets completely insane but there's um spinny blades and lots of blood uh jordan yeah, I mean, I mean, you you can make something that looks like the game we're throwing chairs at this week. Uh, one one thing that stuck out while I was reading the patch notes is they fixed the bug where the wooden pole sometimes wouldn't display when using skin packs. And honestly, guys, a, a nickel for every time I had that problem. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah that was pretty good wording on them. I'll give them that. But the uh, siege is one of those games that I'm waiting for them to get out of early access before I get really into it. Mm-hmm. Because I tried that with Starbound, and I, well, let's just say I'm tired of Starbound by now. Here, 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 here's the thing that bothers me about this whole early access model, though, is that, okay, we get it. There are games that you will just continue to develop because it's uh, you've essentially built yourself a framework, and you're adding more and more features. So why not just have sort of a continual release mode in Steam that says, this is no longer early access, this has been released, but the game you get, you download today, and the game that you download six months from now may be entirely different. You know, uh, you could make... Hell, they, 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 they support it now. You can just patch your game. No, 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 so. no. You could uh, change the entire thing, like get a new name, rework the entire AI, just make an entirely new game and call it Interstellar Marines. Oh, no, wait, they're changing the name, too. Uh, don't make me come over there and hack the bullets out of you. <laughs> no, it wasn't Interstellar Marines. It was Storm United. But yes, this yeah, is one of those. Slash. 
Uh, do do robots cry electric tears? Probably not. But this is it's a 3D beat 'em up game. Has a nice little or it has an interesting little uh, art style. It kind of reminds me of Mega Man Legends. I get what they're trying to do because you're a uh, what you're a, a robot fighting for escape in the grip of a mindless machine. So. There's there, there's some blog joke there. I'm not going to go into that because I don't need that much hate mail. Um, but I mean, it looks interesting. You basically run around, beat the shit out of things, and you try and queue up big combos. Um, Look at the operating so system requirements on Brad, man. I, I I mean, it does require the elusive 64-bit version of Linux 32. <laughs> so if you don't have that lying around on a fucking floppy disk, you might be a little fucked when trying to play this game. But it's um yeah it's it's a little it's a little pricey i'd wait for it to go on sale but it looks interesting at least i yeah, like it's clocking like in this. Uh, let's see thirteen forty nine. unfortunately the first time uh, the first thing i uh, thought when i saw this is like multiplayer will be oh right okay pedro thoughts yeah i actually sent them an email for that exact same reason and they haven't replied so we're waiting it's on you're that not, one. it's not because it's because you're not using linux 32 obviously well in soviet oh. russia linux 32 uses your comrade Oh, yes, this is Mother Russia Bleeds, which is a, an astonishing representation of what happens when Russians run out of vodka or when Russians have vodka. Why not boo? Basically, basically <laughs> just Russians. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's double dragon in Russia <laughs> with shotguns and bears and all sorts of yes. things that you find wandering the streets Sol in Russia. Just ask Sol <laughs> Solid Stone. As he scrambles to get his eye patch. <laughs> no. In Soviet Russia, straights rage on you. Uh, so this works with Mint and um, 18x86. Um, okay. <laughs> it's always listen, listen, good. All, 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 you, all you need is the system bootable System requirements ISO. very much look like uh, maybe Solid Stone wrote, um, <laughs> wrote, wrote them. <laughs> Maybe After Solid Stone vodka. maybe needs to drink a little more vodka before writing system requirements so he actually states what they I, are. I was kind of excited about this. Um, local multiplayer, local co-op. So, um... Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's... it's uh, what, what, was, what was that one Genesis game? Uh, Retro... Or, Streets of Rage? Rage? Streets, Streets, Streets of Rage. Bloodsport? There was, what, what, was that the one with the TV show where you're playing... You're like, ah, whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, you know, it does matter, though. Some people have been making games on Linux for a long, long time. No, of very well, quality. Not exactly. A long time, nonetheless. The whole 15 years, but uh, Frozen Byte have actually been supporting Linux for, well, basically <laughs> since the humble Frozen Byte bundle came out. Yeah, that, and, and that was like one of the, it was either the second or the third bundle after the first yeah. indie bundle. It was so. one of the few first ones that had Linux support on all the games that they um, they gave you, basically. Uh, so looking forward to that one, humble. But yeah, um, Frozen Byte, they have been making games for the past 15 years. And if you were paying attention earlier in the week, you would have been able to find all the Frozen Byte games all the Frozen Byte games like um, Shadow Run, uh, well, that uh, Shadow Grounds, but that one doesn't have a Linux version on Steam. See, Pedro just said like Neo GIF uh, <laughs> for the hate mail segment, right? <laughs> for next yeah. week. <laughs> but, on, on, but, honestly, uh, though, given given the nature of these bundles and how long these games have been in circulation, I'd on, be honestly shocked if there were any Linux gamers worth their salt who don't already own these games. And they go on sale more yeah. often than your mom. Right. So uh, I mean, it's yeah. definitely difficult. Um, the biggest thing with the Frozen Byte for me is they... Uh, I don't speak for anyone except from uh, you just myself. They're on my complete shit list because, you know, they have yet to go back and fix Bug Riddled Mess 3, also known as Trine. Three, they've just ignored it. It's not. You, you, you mean patches. our prison of eternal torment? Yes, which we're getting. <laughs> hey, we're getting close to the end of. That's why we've kind of slowed down. Although, although they made good and actually uh, went back and fixed the guard AI in Shadwin. So I guess that's something. Oh, you you mean the game they went ahead and made instead of fixing Trine Three? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> Listen, as 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 a young hip gentleman on the dating scene, I'm I'm no stranger to the tinders, and getting getting the ladies on that. No, I'm not. I'm really really lonely, you guys. But uh, you can you can get this. This is Reigns, which is a mobile port that, for whatever reason, they they pulled the old switcheroo with the price scheme because normally you can pick this shit up for free on Android. 
but it's actually cheaper on Steam, which is astounding. Yep. It is shocking. <laughs> it's horrifying. It is, and it is really the perfect example of a shitty mobile port because it is literally Tinder the game. You swipe left or swipe right to agree or disagree with things, and that's it. Uh, they said it. Uh, oh they, shit! You can you can get an actual record with this game. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, they say it's Tinder for the gamer crowd or something along those lines. Uh, but they, yeah, they, you, they already have that. It's called Tinder. I thought it was called Poop. <laughs> um. Tinder. Uh, no, 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 no that, that, that's it's get a bit shot more in public inclusive. simulator. <laughs> but yeah, the, this game. Well, basically, it gives you like a deck of cards. Uh, not in the Hearthstone sense or the so like someone gives you a sense. deck of DLC with companion books and yeah, uh, and basically all you do is either swipe left or swipe right. If you, given the choices, you look at the choices that show up when you move the mouse cursor. Mm -hmm. If you're playing it on PC, um, and you make your decisions and you try to keep uh your money your religious level and your population happiness and your military um, strength as it were in check because if they get to the top or they get to the bottom you the king dies you're dead so you have to start so, new game again and, you, and yeah it's uh, I, I mean do you really need more of a description than that it's Roman Reigns the game <laughs> <laughs> exactly it doesn't so involve steroids though let's close this off coming up next we find our inner zen and maybe get a little humble in the process ladies and gentlemen boys and girls you should be watching us live this is usually the new segment but as is tradition we'd like to thank some very special people who for some reason, keep giving us money so we can keep doing this. Go well, figure. it's like a bad addiction, Pedro. They just get, they're just acclimated to the suffering. It's Stockholm Syndrome, and we yeah. love you for it. Of course, we're talking about the lovely, lovely supporters of Linux Gamecast, coming through mostly through Patreon, but there are a few other avenues, i.e. our Amazon affiliate links and PayPal donate buttons at linuxgamecast.com slash support the chosen. But Patreon is where we like to direct your attention, where we post our lovely players' videos a couple weeks ahead of time, so you can check them out. And, hey, we have a new Left for Brad. Hey, or, uh, we actually no no all right uh, listen I'm, I'm confused i'm seeing something in my patreon thing that says lwdw it makes no sense well that's that's because you guys have a weekly daily wednesday podcast where they talk about non linux game stuff and more generic linuxy stuff you see pedro he doesn't talk about it because he's not on it man he, he doesn't want yeah the, well, it's, well, it's kind of hard to talk about something you you, you when you're not on it i is, is that supposed to make me feel anything other than the desire to move on with this segment? Mr. Pickles, I have no <laughs> friends. Well, you know, of course I have no friends. Why, why would I be here on a Saturday night if I had friends? But anyways, we do have a giveaway. Um, a lovely, lovely bunch of people have submitted their gimmies to try and get a copy of Skullgirls. So you got the you got the random org thing. We got five people. Five people, so that means we need a yes. uh, min-max of one through five. Uh, Ooh, this is from random.org. They use atmospheric uh, pressure fluctuations to generate random numbers. Okay, let's do this. Let's see. One through five, who do we have? KTW, Grab your Rene, Havandro, if, 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 if it's Renault, I will actually like go out to Quebec and slap him, but <laughs> okay. let's see. Bring it. One. One. All right. Who, who that? That's KTW. Uh, so expect a message on Patreon with your key. That's fantastic. And of course, all of you can donate patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Um, you get access to the Wolf Slayer in the forums if you uh, get the 250 above or if you give, donate a buck. And if you get 200 or 250 and above, you get access to our show notes. You get to see the sausage before it gets yeah, made. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And don't forget that um, I added a feature to the web zone because I'm stupid and I did it. Oh, no completely um selfish for me it's our amazon affiliate links at the bottom because i can't tell you how many hundreds of dollars we've denied ourselves just because i am like i need to buy all this hardware and i was like damn it it's like now See, I, I i thought you were gonna say sober and not uh sneaky but whatever both are fried so indeed so let, let, let's find some zen yes let's get into the news proper and we don't start with some drivers but we start with some hope 
maybe mm-hmm. perhaps no. yeah so uh wccf tech uh have leaked some uh amd zen benchmarks and uh these benchmarks compare it to a couple of haswell uh intel processors the i5 and the i7s and it doesn't well uh let's see if this is to be believed and uh, when it comes to WCCF tech lately, they're they've pretty been good. Produced... There's also another qualifier you want to throw in there. I mean, this is not some randos throwaway uploading benchmark account thingy. This guy's had product samples for a long, long time. Oh, yeah. And uh, they, these guys have been pretty spot on when it comes to like their leaks and uh, their news coming out of the woodworks a bit earlier than the rest of the mainstream media gets them uh but... you gotta be fair i mean we're the first people in the world it was like this website but man they've kind of been getting it dead right they have yeah. been spot on with this stuff lately that's the thing and with even with a considerably lower clock the amd zen part performs between a haswell i5 and a haswell i7 that's almost competitive now let's see let's say that zen part is overclocked to the same 3.5 gigahertz base clock to 3.7 on turbo as those haswell parts let's see what those can do i don't know i mean my first thought about this is like all right this is neat this kind of holding out hope because you know like amd is what's just Cares my pantaloons off as AMD is being quiet about something. Yeah. Which maybe we should take this as a good sign because it's normally when AMD goes out and fucking oversells something. <laughs> that That's usually when they don't have I, shit. I, I think they learned their lesson from the whole bulldozer Past incident. Past decade? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, bulldozer, oh my God, power it's driver, be excavator. Oh, you get maybe 5% performance on the fucking six-year-old phenom that I was running up until now. Um... But, I mean, yeah, it's some competitive benchmarks for a few generations old CPU. So that brings uh, AMD processors up to snuff in terms of, you know, single-threaded graphical performance. Mm-hmm. What I'm interested in seeing, though, is because we're getting that Intel-level performance over, say, 8 to uh, eight to 24 cores or 32 cores even, depending on what kind of uh, processors they release to the mass market, how is this going to fare for Vulkan and DirectX 12 games? Well, I mean, that's definitely one of the things that Vulkan and, to a lesser extent, DX12, because uh, that was kind of cute. Um, Scott, I think you're in Shadowrun right now when they were like, Oh, what games does Vulcan support? And I was like, uh, Dota 2? Why, why don't you go see the most popular fucking played game? I don't know, in the world. Um, in the on world. Steam? Yeah. <laughs> uh, outside, as opposed to what? Fucking Origin. Uh, right. Uh, League of to, Legends has like 10 million people. To fucking continue. World, world of Warcraft on <laughs> Battle.net. Um, the whole thing about Zen, we love it, we want it. Um, still a little bit worried about AMD um, coming out and saying, well, we're not really worried about competing on price. You fucking better be A- but B, I just imagine like that warehouse, you know, and somebody at Intel walks over and like gets up on the ladder and he pulls something off the shelf and whoo, blows the dust off of it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, this is the i8. We've had this for about oh, yeah, a decade. They, they, they probably have like the 16 core i760 has 700k right, HQ. Yeah, and, that... um, yeah the, the, this one's 20 watts and we're going to sell it for 100 bucks and just. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Intel's uh, R&D department Intel. is like leaps and bounds ahead of amds i would have to say just in terms of raw computational speed and performance you're just an nvidia fent weight that doesn't work for that argument (laughs) oh yes yeah so humble bundle have you know they had that article a while back that said that oh g2a they're not good but we're good guys please trust us and now they've sort of uh reinforced that point by setting up a humble partners program uh so basically the during the beta just a couple of twitch streamers are going to have access to it as it were um they're going to be it's similar i gotta interject right there because you know a couple like the high-end twitch streamers they don't need this shit yeah they don't they really don't you can run ads whenever you want you got shit like that and you're not worried about G2A and all that's, you know, Twitch is not where you're making your coin. 
Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. it, it's a good. I, if not, if not for coin making, you can at least direct people to charities or to good developers pu- putting out quality games because yeah. that's where all that's where a lot of these indie games get showcased with like these big name stream, streamers. So if there's a yeah. bundle that you could go buy, I mean, that, that's that's some product synergy. And Humble would like to get a, say, a bit of a cut, because if you subscribe to a streamer on Twitch, Mm -hmm. that money is going to get divided between Twitch and the streamer itself, and Humble doesn't get any of it. So they'd like a a little bit of that money. That is where you're wrong. You get your default cut, period. (laughs) You don't, I mean, I know a lot of people are like, I'm not giving any money to Humble. That, that's, that. Default cut is already agreed upon before the sale goes live. No matter what you slide whatever to, yes. the developer is going to get their cut, period. Yeah, when, when, when they say humble tip, that is on top of what they're already making. Right. Um, yeah, because they yeah. are hosting the service, so they have to at least make that much money back. And, and I considering- got to assume that that's just going to apply to any type of partner. I mean, you're going to get your cut, but your tip is yeah. going to be... You know, on top of that, and I'm sure. Yeah, and they going- say one of the things that they mentioned in the article is that they uh, will still have the sliders. Let's say you're going to get a humble bundle through the partner link, you can actually set the slider to dictate how much money the uh, the the partner is getting. Hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. You know, or maybe uh, we'll have to start streaming some more to be eligible. Uh, I, I, I I don't know because if you insert Pedro in a humble bundle, <laughs> would the universe collapse? Uh, let's well, that's something we'll have to wait and see as well. But uh, yeah, this is well, this is a way for people to make a bit more money on top of what they were already making off of Twitch um, to counteract some of the uh, some of those G two A deals that were going on because. According to some of the interviews I've seen, uh, people were actually making a lot of money off of those G2A deals. So, right, well, wants... well, 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 they're defrauding a ton of legitimate developers. Yeah, that, hey, man, that's what the big are you talking thing. about? They're, they're just a middleman, man. They don't have any control over uh, when, like, Bob shows up with 200,000 keys. I mean, he's legit. They, yeah. they, they, totally. abso- they absolutely don't, and there's no way to heuristically determine whether or not this person is a scammer or not. Not at all. 100% no. <laughs> Not happening. But coming up next, you More can humble stick, bundle. You can right. stick this in your survival and spoke it. The only thing that um Linux needs more than um, first person shooters is survival games because there's <laughs> sur- sur- survival horror games, Ben. Oh man. Uh well, all right. We're we're looking for the yellow exclamation party. All right, Warner Savage Land, Skyrim job, Rust. Rusty Trombone, shelter, shelter, shelter has a Linux port. No one cares about yep. that. Basically, the only thing you would care about the humble oh, Bob survival Cats. this bundle is Skyrim Job, the um, survival version called Savage Lands. Um, Pedro, it is a Unity game, correct? It is, yes. And uh, I was actually surprised because last time I played it was, well, it was almost a year ago. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of broken. All I would see whenever I try to get in game was just graphical corruption all all the time they did actually manage to fix it which is surprising at least on the 1080 i was getting 60 80 perps on a regular basis even with the um draw distance maxed out which was like the big performance killer on the earlier version so I guess they must have updated. No, too. I think you're doing pretty good on that because I mean, with the 980, I slammed everything over to Dorito, and yeah, I mean, it, uh, genuinely was probably hovering in the high 50s, but I would see, you know, just because I couldn't figure out it's multiplayer, right? Uh, yes, it has multiplayer. Yeah. We're, we're no, gonna have to do I'm, this I'm, because I'm fucking all, up. if I could figure out how to start the damn fire, and that, that's why I quit <laughs> out of rage. Yeah, it uh, actually works. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I mean, if it's multiplayer, I might pick this up. I haven't gotten any of these survival games other than Rust because Mr. Newman was nice enough to provide us a key. I guess I should probably check Savage Lands out on the on Wintel, see if that uh, performs any better. Yeah, it should actually perform a bit better. It's one of those few Unity games that isn't bottlenecked by the CPU, so that's good. But the combat still feels like you're swinging a fat out of this, sir, at a at a boar or a deer 
or even a skeleton. Well, cl clear, clearly, that's because you don't know how to fight. That's how you fight. You swing a feather duster at them. <laughs> yeah, you just swing a feather duster at them until they drop dead. It doesn't feel particularly impactful. So you currently yeah. have nine days, 14 hours, 26 minutes, and 50... 48 It's probably going to be minus, minus one day once this podcast comes out. Yeah, that's basically out. what that you want to get in. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> Grab it because, you know, we might do our own little server thing. You get some online things, and you'll know when you hit the uh, Linux Gamecast because everyone's buildings will look like, um, yeah, those things. Up next. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know you know what my favorite thing in the world to do is? Chew on Vicodin. Nom, nom, nom. This is Lutris. Point zero three eight. Um, they've got a couple, some little minor release. Uh, not a lot. There's some new runners. They have uh, 3DS and DS emulation. You can um, f detect CD-ROMs now. They have improved racist joypad support, which is something that I did not even <laughs> know existed. But there you go. Um, there's also some. Um, there's also yeah. So it will it will totally detect stuff in your cup holder, and it's Raycast, not racist, but it looks the exact same. <laughs> um, so, but uh, the big news is uh, Lutris not point four is coming, and it has some big changes, including an update to Python three, or should I say Jython three Strider? Maybe you're gonna rewrite all of Lutris in Java, like those fine guys who play on Linux. Who knows? Well, no. I mean, if you're gonna be those lot, um, I play on Linux. You need to create a poll, and when everyone disagrees with you, you need to remove the poll and pretend it never happened. Yeah. Um, kind of interesting because you know, I knew Strider had this in the works. Uh, Frenchy Machu uh, from Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, our Wednesday show. Um, he's like, yeah, I got the uh, last CD-ROM thing going. Last night's update to the Steam client added. Uh, <laughs> installation from cd-rom media <laughs> yes it did if you're on the uh betas for the steam client you will have seen that the uh it was the only thing they had in the change log too is you get better physical media support okay Why? okay so show show, show <laughs> hands who actually has an optical drive plugged into their computer right now Up next, uh, <laughs> yeah. So this 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 is from Vlambeer, uh, the fine folks who brought you Nuclear Throne. Um, but they also did something else. You might remember Nuclear a couple throne. of years. What was that about? I, I, honestly, I don't remember. Thirty N Nuclear Throne. It's 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 that roguelike feet. that Empty's addicted to. And we'll yeah. play until he's a skeleton at a desktop. But uh, they were also responsible for a weird little game. Uh, you see, a couple of years ago, Crow Team actually licensed out the Serious Sam property to um, to a bunch of people to make games. And so these guys actually made a turn-based RPG based on Serious Sam, which is coming to Linux. I'm interested in checking that out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, nu Nuclear Thrones getting an update. They're getting some console versions. And yeah... Yeah, Pedro. it remains to be seen if that uh, Nuclear Throne update will actually bring the uh, 60 FPS patch along with it, because it's one of those games that's locked at 30. Uh, but besides that, they're bringing their old uh, library, uh, their old games, to the uh, Steam library. Uh, it's uh, Super Crate Box and Gun Gods, which uh, are basically the precursors to Nuclear Throne. And God those are coming to Linux. Godz with a Z, yes. Because um, poor literacy so, is cool. Yeah, they're bringing those to Linux, so I'll, I'm, I'm glad. Please do. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. No. It's, and these guys, uh, Nuclear Throne's available on Linux. Empty can yeah. attest to that because. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. That. Until <laughs> until he literally dies in his chair. Up next, though. We're still we're we're no longer waiting on Godot because it's released the 2.1 stable version. Um, a lot there's been not a lot of stuff underlying stuff change. It's been mostly usability. They have uh, drag and drop um, importing of assets. They have dynamic script reloading. They have a new plugin API. Some HD some high DPI uh, support for their editor if you're making your 2D game at 4K. Uh, they added a bunch of context menus. Basically, just a lot of stuff to make Ado a lot more usable. Uh, you may have you may remember it from that one Portuguese point and click adventure game that no one ever played, but it is <laughs> open source. It is freely available. You can download it. You can make some games. Uh, we even had Brick Simulator coded in that before we got uh, our awesome Leadworks version that does not not work. 
<laughs> yes. And I know M Fox Dog is in Shet Realm right now. We need a. Let's just say we need a build of uh, Brick Simulator. We Brick can Simulator. No, 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 no. We need a collector's edition. <laughs> yeah, no. We hey, need re- something re- that released we can exclusively. Sub- Released exclusively we can on the Sega Saturn. To, uh, Steam Greenlight. We need that on Steam Greenlight. And if we can actually get it greenlit, you'll get a cut of the profits. How's that? L- listen, listen, we're gonna we're gonna start a Kickstarter for Brick Simulator. <laughs> and after we get the funding, <laughs> we're gonna screw all our previous goals and make a Sega Dream. It's gonna be brilliant, man. Because that's what people want. What, what we actually need is like uh the DLC to like you know, color your bricks. You could have like a slob brick with like an Adidas track yes. suit on, or a gold <laughs> brick, or something and like it's that. Squatting. Or like unlockables where your um, brick turns into train, and yeah, that, that could definitely be. Uh, thing, uh, th- yeah, that's... and and Godot makes that easy because you can just reload your scripts. Godot like... is easy. Um, it's just awesome. They're great. We know they listen to their show because I remember the first time we talked about it, I saw their logo and I was like, that looks like a fucked up insect. I need that changed. Next week it was gone. And now they have a creepy robot guy. So definitely a good thing. And, and that's going to be changed next week because Ben is master of Godot and coming up next, we're going to review a game that has a very, very silly to pronounce name and a very, very silly to look at visual aesthetic. your wet soggy baguettes out of the shower it's time to run bitch run this is seum speed runners from hell from pine studios developed on the unity engine you can pick it up for about 15 of your local space currency um and what is it seum speed runners from hell is the world's only competitive heavy metal first person platformer on rails uh slice every last millisecond as you race and blast your way through deadly arenas teleport jump fly and bounce in hundred merciless and fast-paced maps for the ultimate prize your soul or beer beer is my soul and you know what else is my soul the chair acquisition one chair means that it's garbage two chairs means that it's meh three chairs means that's pretty good four chairs means that it's amazing we also got our categories of doom makes with the working shiny sounds controls and fun you lather rinse you repeat and you come out with a beautiful beautiful head of hair and a less than soggy baguette so let's kick this off then did see him make with the working yeah i spent more time working that in than you did in, um what we were talking about earlier into the show but over here on the kombuntu um 1404 <laughs> disclaimer running a um four point x current you know 4.4, yeah, doing a little bit of that, yeah, so maybe, who knows, it's crazy, with a 980, unfortunately, not as powerful as Pedro's 1080, which is just, oh my god, it's so great. Doesn't really mean much nowadays. Yeah, 8150, um, AMD, octocore, box of business. Now, I've played this at 1080 and uh, 3840, or 2160, I guess we should say. Didn't really see it go under 200 FERPs. Either time, just playing around, doing its thing, it's running, not crashing, Unity game, and, you know, switching between um, 1080 and UHD, no issues, it was done right, it was put well together, no complaints, I mean, this is not shovelware, but it, it still might have some other issues, but it's not with making with a working, I'm gonna give it four chairs. Well, it's not exactly shovelware, but it is certainly reminiscent of freeware. My computer is more than capable of running Quake 3 at <laughs> above several frames, <laughs> at above 200 frames per second. And that's the i7-6700K with the GTX 980 and 32 gigs of RAM. Yeah, no issues. It ran. It did the thing. So I got to give it four chairs. Yeah, on the FX8370 E overclocked at 4.2 gigahertz and the GTX 1080. Uh, from Gigabyte it, uh, and running Ubuntu Mate 1604.1, 64-bit, it dropped to about 150 to 200 and FERPs while I was recording the footage. If you're oh, watching well, the... I was about uh, to ask you what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, if you're watching the uh, produced version right now, it managed to drop to about 150 to 200 while I was uh, using NVENC lossless. So that's pretty good. It's yet another Unity game which isn't bottlenecked by the processor. Also pretty good. Big kudos to the devs and to the Bard family for the work they keep putting on the Unity engine. Four chairs. 
Uh, that's four chairs to mix with working. Up next is Shiny and Sounds. Ven, did the Quake 3 graphics blow your mind? Well, if you're watching the produced version of this, it's directly behind my head organ. Um, what does it look like? Well, it looks like a slightly updated Quake 3 mod in hell. Um, it, it's got its sense of humor. Graphically, it does show you like evil Clippy. And it, it was cute, but they made evil Clippy red. Like, oh, I'm devil Clippy. And I was like, that, that kind of ruined the joke because Clippy was already the spawn of Satan. You didn't need to make him red. It should have <laughs> just been regular fucking Clippy and the joke would have stuck a bit better. Um, It looks all right. I mean, it really genuinely does look like, like Quake 3 Arena. Like, in hell. I'm just going to keep on saying that. Nothing to report back. I mean, if you look at the screenshots, that's what it runs, and that's probably why it runs so good. I mean, it's very simple with the graphics, simple to physics, but it's supposed to be metal, then. Do all this business. Um, The soundtrack, the background noise, that is in your ear pussies, kind of comes across as like a kid's bop version of Metallica's Black Album. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because that was the last album Metallica made the before they were abducted by aliens and replaced by fuck all knows what. It just wasn't Metallica after that. But I'm going to have to ding it a chair for that. And I'm going to have to ding it one more chair personally, because they absolutely use the generic shift, uh, pitch shift, overmodulated demon voice filter for their I'm the demon and audio and it's just tired and it's worn out and it's demist because we don't sound that way so I'll give you two chairs uh, technically you're solid I actually want a Steam Workshop mod for this game where all the, all the in-game audio is replaced with Ven going, oh, I'm a demon. That would be amazing. But for the game proper um, this guy would have gotten two chairs except for one reason I am a sucker for metal soundtracks. I don't care if it's particularly bad or cheesy or derivative, which, you know, this one kind of is. But, you know, it, it, it's fun to get into it. Um, it is, a fun game you can play while playing this game is Name That Riff, because I'm pretty sure the guy who did the guitar for this stole a bunch of Motorhead and Metallica riffs. And I'm curious to see what sort of plagiarism lawsuits emerge from the soundtrack. <laughs> As for the rest of the look and feel, I mean, it, it's Quake. That's not a bad thing, but it doesn't get you any brownie points. So I'm going to give that three chairs. Yeah, it really does look like someone took a Quake 3 Arena and took out 90% of the floor and threw in a couple of power-ups just to make sure you could actually finish the level. Does the uh, Devil Hand really need to take up like a quarter of the screen? It's a very good-looking and well-detailed hand. Hell, I wish my right hand looked like that. Uh, but does it have well, to be that What do you mean by that, Pedro big? White? No, 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 it's red. But let's not get into that. <laughs> uh, the, there was definitely some background music going on, but most of it was uh, elevator music of the metal kind. And the moment I got in the zone, as it were, uh, it became negligible background noise. Now, your character likes to quip about acquiring power-ups or nailing a jump or whatever but his vocabulary seems a bit limited even more than mine when i'm pissed drunk uh, also not entirely sure lucifer would be the appropriate entity to be dropping random bits of internet meme culture as it were thankfully the levels are short and the repetitiousness of the quips is kept down to a minimum so it gets three chairs all right, well, that's two chairs for shiny and sounds. Up next is Control. Then, how'd you face plant? Did not work with a Nintendo Power Pad, but, you know, a lot of stuff doesn't. Always need to test it. LGC cares. Um, Platforming. In 3D, when you can't see your feet, stupid <laughs> idea. First person, yeah. <laughs> Big circle on their design board. Stupid idea, and all arrows pointed to that. Let's just roll with that, because that's what they did. And in all fairness, you know, I've been doing these platforming bits uh, <coughs> since the original Quake, you know, 20 Morgan. years and a burp later. <laughs> so I kind of know what I'm doing with it. I can manage it, you know. I, I can even put my walker down from time to time and say, good Texas Ranger, then continue playing the game. This, however, 
What is wrong with your jump? I mean, there's something wrong with your jump because you're making me doing the bunny hopping on the places, and sometimes your jump just doesn't work. I mean, it's not, is a bit off. <laughs> it's not necessarily the physics engine. Sometimes it just doesn't work. I mean, I know it registers the thing on the keyboard that goes to the computer, to the um, display thing. <laughs> and it's like, ah! To the, to the remote X server. To the... It's almost like maybe something like that was included to make it more of a rage platform. Because guys, if we make people angry, they'll play it more on Twitch. But more about that in the fun section. I'll give you two chairs. I mean, there's no real issue with the controls. You move your mouse, you waz to move, and you you right click to shoot to shoot teleports or fly or whatever, and you left click to shoot your fireballs. But yeah, I mean, I mean, like like Ven said, you can't see your feet. I'll, I'll get into that a bit more in the fun section. Um, and that that's that's really a UI problem because the, the spikes and stuff are outside your field of view, and it's very very difficult to gauge what will kill you when and what won't because you don't have that real frame of reference. But my one gripe, fucking Flappy Bird, seriously. <laughs> oh oh yeah, there was that one uh, level. <laughs> yeah, for I'll, I'll give it four chairs for controls, but we're we're gonna we're gonna have some words in the fun segment. <laughs> Mark, Mark. Yeah, as much as the uh, level design fucks with you, and it will fuck with you, even given the slightest chance, the controls are spot on. If you miss a jump, go back and try again because it was your own goddamn fault. If you can't seem to get a hold of the uh, teleportation slash gravity reversal thing. Keep flailing until you're through. It worked for me on a couple of levels, so I can't really fault it for that. Four chairs. All right, that's three chairs for control. And let's wrap this up. Then, did you have fun with Sim? Well, you know, listen to me you, your entire way, developers, because I know you're listening. Uh, there was a lot of reviews on that uh, Steam store page. Don't seem legit. I'm just saying that. But you probably already knew that. However... This is an alright game. It's a neat piece of kit. I mean, in the first 10 minutes, it managed to elicit a verbal fuck you level out of me. So you're doing something right. I mean, I was engaged with your particular product. Over, you know, most of the levels, they're wicked simple. But every now and then, they accidentally fucked up and made one that possessed just the slightest bit of challenge. And those are exceptional. Like, uh, Jordan will continue on about flappier bird. And I was like, all right, good good show on that one. I mean, didn't see that one coming. Glad it's there. But uh, you do have that teleport and fuck gravity mutator. Well, you know, mm, unoriginal, wholly uninspired. They do help the other levels that are not flappier bird be slightly less um, tedious. Because that's really what a lot of the... Once you figure it out, and you're like, oh, right. Got to do it in a certain time. Too slow, because I'm a demon. And all that. Another mechanic is collecting beer, because, get it, we're doing a parody game. Guys, don't sue us the game, basically. And um, you're playing some, uh, like, uh, West Red, New York this is a State redneck. redneck. Right. And, um, but you are, you know, like one of the little special things. You got to want to collect all the beer cans for all the points in hell. It does have the, um, issue that one of our favorite games, uh, well, Pedro and I, uh, Distance, which is a racing game. It has the issue that Distance has because there are actually legit ways to glitch through a level. And that is a genuine problem. Um... What's the point of having ladder boards if shot like that exists? Because I don't care who can glitch faster. That's not a show of skill. That's a show of who can Google the best. <laughs> and it immediately causes me to lose all interest in competing unless it's just like, oh, Pedro, whatever. But I can't compete against Pedro because he's a cheating little bitch. And he'll, he's the I one Googling how one to level. glitch through it. One level. <laughs> totally doing that. Oh, don't, don't, just don't fuck already, you two. And I can already hear you on the air, but shut the fuck up, Grandpa. That's how we compete in 2016 with elite hacks. And that's. And yet you wonder why absolutely nobody, I checked it today multiple times, streams this game on Twitch. I wonder no longer, children. Hashtag LGC cares. 
It's not a competitive game when you get shit like that and your leaderboards mean fuck and or all. So trust me when I say, try before you buy this game started life on Itch.io. There will be a link in the show notes where you can, where you can probably just Google it. There is a Linux demo available. Go download it. Give it a spin. Kick it in its teeth organs. And make up your own mind. Because, after all, at the end of the day, I'm just one lonely hell of a game critic. So, what do we say? Two chairs? Yeah, that seems legit. Oh, hush, Sebastian. Isn't there like a prepubescent boy you have to go tend to? Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, you can basically make your own. I've, there is a demo, and you can, within like the first five minutes of playing the demo, you will know whether you like or dislike this game. Um, and everything else about the game. Uh, all the levels tend to be about 8 to 15 seconds long, but it'll take time because sometimes you have to like purposefully fail the levels to scout out ahead because otherwise you're going to get turned around and die and then you're going to have to do this again. But honestly, here, here's where the game falls short for me. Two reasons. Number one, I hate running clocks because I'm one of those people who will take all the time looking at the clock instead of performing the task at hand because I'm too concerned about the time limit. <laughs> Number two, I hate repeating the same shit over and over and over and over again trying to get it under a specific time. It just doesn't appeal to me. Um, but, I mean, the game itself is relatively inoffensive. Um, there, there, there are some moments where it's just like, yeah, I don't have the time or the inclination to like try and get down this fucking microsecond 360 degree turn shoot the fucking torch at the or the fire at the torches and grab the thing and flappy bird my way through especially when again i i talked about this you don't have the full field of view so things will just sort of kill you outside of your field of vision and you don't know why and it's really really hard to gauge especially when you're dealing with like simultaneously spike floors and ceilings and you're trying to do the flappy bird thing to get through if you can't tell where that top of the spike begins you're just gonna die a lot um but I, like i said uh it's relatively inoffensive and it does what it says on the tin fairly well i mean reasonably well anyways and it's not a bad way to kill a couple minutes this is one of these games where you pick it up you play it for a bit you get frustrated you Put it down and come back to it. Maybe maybe if you're making popcorn or like brewing tea or something, this will be worth it. But for the price, uh, 15 bucks, I would pay no more than five for this. So I would say wait until it goes on sale. Still, it's two chairs. It is a well done game. I'll give it that. It's a like it's like a first person 3D action Hank in hell. Uh, and just like action Hank, I'm not exactly feeling it um i would only be in it to try and beat other people's times like distance uh but outside of the three of us no one else has the game and i'm not enough not enough of an egotist to say buy this game so i can have a reason to keep playing it the mechanics are sound, the controls are tight, and since the, lef since the levels are often very short, the quips the main character spits out are... Eh, eh, they don't really get all that repetitive. Uh, all in all, this is one of those games I hate to throw chairs at. Uh, it's not damn awful, but it's also not particularly good, interesting, or even innovative in any way. It's a genre that's been done before, and better like distance it's a perfectly mediocre game and as such it gets a perfectly mediocre score two chairs actually you bring up an interesting point about action hank this game probably could be um could get a get a bit more chairs in the fun ranking if it had sort of an action hank ghost type thing where you could compete against your friends ghosts but it doesn't yeah so that's what this that's the score it gets. So that's two chairs for fun, two chairs in total. So CM speedrunners from hell. Meh. Pick it pick it up if it goes on sale. I wouldn't say it's worth the full price. Coming up next though, we brush up We get uh, final uh, thoughts here. Final uh, oh yeah, that's true. Final thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's what I was gonna kind of agree with you on one hundred percent. Uh we were talking before the show went live and everything completely fell apart and we spent an additional <laughs> hour before the show actually started after going live. <laughs> LGC cares. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like uh, 9 dollars 20% off. And, hey, guys, it's a parody. And maybe that's fun. I completely agree with you. If there was like uh, some type of shadow 
racing, something like that, completely get rid of the glitchable levels. Because there, there's no point. Whether Why is that even a ranking thing? Get rid of it. And, you know, one thing I will give credit for is Jordan did say, you know, FOV can be an issue when you can't see anything, but at least he didn't say, oh, my God, I get nauseous because if you're one of those people, <laughs> don't have kids. We don't need you reproducing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, FOV can actually cause some degree of motion sickness. No kids for you. Uh, especially in first-person games, but uh, with Zoom specifically, maybe I just don't really identify as the um, trailer park dwelling. I can dwelling hear Nori sterilizing herself in the background. Come redneck uh, metal it's listening hipster, part. as it were. But there's something to this game. Well. I know exactly what it is. It's action Hank in first person where you can see your feet while you're jumping. And it's a first person platformer. So that's a problem. Hey, Drew, can I ask you a serious question? Go ahead. Action Hank is infinitely more popular than this, correct? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Does Action Hank have level fucking glitch hacks in it? No, it does not. Thank you. Yes. But uh, much like Action Hank, even without the level glitching... Uh, there's this game. It just doesn't really do it for me. I mean, if you're going to be competitive with times, uh, turn your main character. You're not very good at action, Hank, are you? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I think well, we're done with it, that. It, I, I mean, just 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 uh, just to harp on Pedro's final point. This is it, it. It suffers from the same problem that Dead Core did. That other game that we threw chairs at. That is essentially this, but with less yes. hell and yes. it was because that game more was cool level design. I, I will give Dead Core credit. <laughs> uh, it looks very very pretty. But that about wraps that up. So coming up next, we brush up on our Klingon and eat some breakfast cereal. Live long and proud. Gentlemen, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's time for some good old hating on anything that has a penis. Yes, it's a hate mail. So if wait, like wait, not wait, you, Pedro? wait, wait, don't you mean cisgender male? Uh, no, uh, just hating on males. <laughs> That's racist, man. You're a racist. <laughs> you, no, you, I mean, I mean, you can you, you can be a transgender male with a penis. That's if, if anything, that. it would be sexist. What if you're but just a sweet transvestite? Let's only not get into transsexual that. Transylvania. <laughs> If you'd like to get in touch with us, go on over to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button on the nav bar, and fill out the form. Just pick LGCW on the little drop box you have at the top there. It's pretty easy. Or if, say, you're a fan of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, you can pick LWDW from that same drop box and leave us a bit of feedback on that. That'd be kind of awesome. But we actually have some uh, genuine hate mail. Oh, sort of. Sorry, yeah. this is this is from Gerg or Greg. He says this is the best use of pop filters ever. Love the show. Stumbled into it while at loading add-ons to a Raspberry Pi open Electro. I'm a Linux newbie <laughs> that felt I should learn how to cross-train my admin privileges on OS X. After adding a Retina iMac to the home PC network I use for my commercial imaging, it show holds my interest since it's about vi gaming and video cards. But I find it frequently reinforces my real-world Linux learnings without feeling like I'm studying a manual. Thanks, and I'll be filtering my Amazon Photo Gear purchases through your link in the meantime. Well. It's funny that you should mention about learning because there's a test next week and it's going to be a 5,000 word essay handwritten <laughs> due on Monday. Yeah, no, you have to pick out which is uh, Jordan's favorite brand of um, maple syrup. It's pretty easy. It's one covered in food and fingerprints. Um, yeah, man, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, seriously, like, hit me back. Let me have a photography you do. Um, mm -hmm. I can answer questions about uh, C41 and C16 chemistry, along with uh, being able to field strip uh, basically any uh, Noritsu or Fuji Frontier uh, chemical printer that has ever existed. Hi, NSA. Yeah. Thanks for those. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, ooh, yeah. Fixer, strong oxidizer. Hello, cyanide. Um, but thanks for doing that. And thanks for being better than us, because we constantly forget to use those Amazon things, and that's just free money that a lot of us, I mean, it's like, ah, could have done that, got some extra cash, but you did A lot it. of us meaning Vin. Yeah, because, yeah, you're stupid Vin. Bad Vin. 
And up next, well, I can't read Klingon. Okay. I can try. Vaj video cork no goodies. YouTube jetot. Daleb kav lel gc. Yes. W s ja comment la g. German, French, Japanese, English, hold petaj. Quastas tlaham. Job es kij. Che la vaj boo. That sounds like a sex move. Kev. Kev wa kastavis wa nach. Car weekly cha joy bang vaj pole woody cop. Sorry, Klingons in the audience for butchering your language, you filthy patox. Hashtag bang. <laughs> so, no, um, this came from who? A chosen supporter, actually. Uh, we're talking about it. Like, oh, all the languages are the spoken. Vin, you speak. I was like, all right, first of all, speak, yes. Fluent? Mm -mm. You'll never hear that fucking word out of my mouth, organ. But, you know, we're talking like basic Japanese. Look, look at this fucker right here. Japanese. He can fucking read the DBZ. I can understand Japanese. Speak because, it, not so much. Dragon Ball Z, son. <laughs> <laughs> space, space Portuguese and um, English. Yeah, uh, let's see. Portuguese, English, Spanish... A That's little Spanish, bit of French Spanish. with some difficulty. Well, how do you not fucking... If you grew up in... How do you not speak French? I mean, I'm not saying, <laughs> again, fluently, but you can understand. Listen, we... Yes, I can understand it just We fine. could not do a show speak Wednesdays it. if we didn't understand French. <laughs> no, you, you absolutely English could. English with a different French accent. accent. It's different. <laughs> now, I mean, I Actually, I Jordan's the only person French on the show that doesn't degree. speak more like, than one language, but he's Canadian, and everyone thinks outside of Canada that all Canadians speak French, which is... Hey, hey. <laughs> I, can, I, I can at least read French. I, I, I can yeah. at least do that. Uh, good on you, Jordan. I, too, can read <laughs> English alphabets. Um, <laughs> exactly, but I at least know what the words mean. <laughs> Which is better you than know, most that's, people. That's, that's actually saying more than the average American person. Hi, American. I don't know. I guess at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, I think we all suffer, not necessarily from language, but, um, I mean, I, extreme I feel verbal English. diarrhea. Not as much as Pedro, but there, there's a lot of times where I'm like, <laughs> English, Finn. And I'm not saying for any other reason than we start the show at 2 a.m. in Space Portugal, so... Right, now I'd be the same way. <laughs> but nerding out, I, I love fucking language. I think it's awesome, especially in like Germanic type languages, Latin, stuff like that. Super easy. English, then you have English, English, and all that business. But that, that childlike curiosity carries over to everything. That, I mean, I think that speaks to everyone in chat room, everyone watching the show interested in Linux. Because we can't help ourselves, and we got to be very careful. Because you see something, ooh, shiny, and you're like, "Wait a minute, do I have a month and a half to dive into this?" Because y you know yourself, and that is what often happens. Oh, uh, there's also the whole, you know, computers themselves are a language, and the technical jargon, and the. Well, I mean, you, do you ever have the language? Problem, of Linux. I mean, you you get you. <sighs> there's so much fascinating shit to get fascinated about that you got to kind of like pick and choose really your is. like what am i going to get into uh i you know what i i find at least for me it's more of an organic i'll dabble in a bunch of stuff and then mm. something will click and i'll get super into that and just go down that you, rabbit hole you've never i i assume you've never gone into wikipedia and just hit the random article button and read through no it? have you have you played the wikipedia game where yeah, you it try always to, ends in where, philosophy. Where, no, 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 Pedro. Where you click on random article and then try <laughs> to link yourself back to structural architecture of bridges. Uh, no, uh, I played the uh, philosophy one. Get on it's my level. Get <laughs> 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 on that bomb show. Uh, Let's cue the music because you can always find us around. Not this week, but normal weeks. Um, 9.30 Eastern Time, type that in, um, type in, you know, it's Freedom Units, so it'll be around that time. You can always find me on the Twitters. I'm at Vin Stone, you scream in my direction. You know, um, thank you, Scott, for reminding me that um, bleep, bloop, bleep, thud happened today. That was kind of sad. Um, plus Vin Stone on the G Pluses. Hit me there, and if you got a comment or anything like that, and it's engaging, I'll get back to you. That one's a bit more difficult because I have almost 5,000 people that are not bots. 
following me over there. So every morning is, you know, somewhere between 70 and 100 notifications. I'm Jordan Spung. You can find me making random noises with, with my mouth that might be French or Maybe. might be Canadian, buddy, at The Burning Fool <laughs> on Twitter or plus Jordan Spung on Google+. Plus. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can usually find me drunkenly rambling about something on some social media of some sort, usually at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. Plus. And just remember, at the end, end of the day, children, because, you know, this is a kid's show. Is, this, is, this is how much water you should drink. <laughs> it's healthy. Yeah, I know. The, the rest should just be pure grain alcohol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, seriously. It's like the fifth one. Half whiskey, half Coke. It's Fuck you. Jesus, man. The hell are you got against leprechauns? <laughs> Empty's going to kick your so, ass. So much. But yes, that, that is very true. RIP2D2, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Five dudes.